Okay, I want to thank everybody for being here. Uh, this is the final press conference uh, for the special double main event featuring Lucas La Máquina Matisse versus Tiwa Kiran and also Jorge El Niño de Oro Linares uh, versus Mercito No Mercy Hesta. Uh, we're all very excited about this Saturday's show. Uh, the event is going to take place uh, at the Fabulous Forum, as you all know. Uh, also joining us up in the dais is the talented undercard that's going to be fighting, so I'll introduce them as well, and they'll have a little something to say about Saturday's card. Uh, but first, television. Obviously, this is brought to you by HBO, uh, Boxing After Dark. Uh, it's going to be at 10.30 Eastern, uh, and the undercard is going to be televised on Ring TV beginning at 3.05 Pacific uh, up to 6.05 uh, 6 uh, uh, Eastern, 3.05 Pacific, 6.05 Eastern. Tickets, there's still tickets on sale. You know, the tickets the last few days have been going very quickly. We're very excited because they've jumped in the last week or so. And uh, it, looks, it looks very, very good. So you want to get out there and get your tickets. Tickets are starting as low as $10. Uh, you know, you can see two great world title fights for as low as $10. Uh, they go up to 50 and 100 for ringside. You can get them at the forum box office or you can get them at Ticketmaster, 1-800-745-3000. I want to thank the sponsors involved, obviously. Tecate, the official beer of boxing. Uh, Hennessy, Never Stop, Never Settle, and Casa Mexico Tequila. Uh, so first, I want to bring up to the dais to say a little something about the card. A person that was instrumental, obviously, in helping get this card together. And uh, I think we're starting off with a bang uh, this year. And they've been a great partner to us at Golden Boy Promotions, but they're committed to boxing as well and always put on the best shows, and that's HBO. And I want to bring up my good friend, Peter Nelson. Peter? All right, thank you, Eric. I want to thank all the media for showing up today and supporting what it is that we do. Uh, I want to thank the fighters and their teams. It's great to start the year off with two 50-50 fights, two world title fights on Boxing After Dark. Um, it's great to be back at the Forum. They always produce phenomenal fights because venues like this put pressure on the fighters to deliver for fans. And I really want to thank the team over at Golden Boy, everyone there, particularly Oscar, Eric, Roberto, always putting together 50-50 matchups. You saw at the end of last year, a lot of fights that people didn't think were 50-50 turned out to be upsets. Saddam Ali, um, Orlando Salido's upset loss to Mickey Roman. So again, on Saturday night, we're gonna see all four of these fighters on HBO give it their all, and we're excited to see what fireworks come out of it. Matisse has always made great fights for us. We're excited to see what Karam has to bring. And we're excited to see Linares coming back, defending his title once again against Marcito Hesta um, with, in his corner, one of the greatest trainers of all time, the great Freddie Roach. And our start time, as Eric mentioned, is 10.30 uh, ETPT. First fight in the ring on the West Coast here will be 7.30 p.m. We look forward to seeing you all there. Thanks so much. Again, uh, it's, it's, you know, we're kicking off the year with HBO. It's their first uh, televised show. And uh, what better way to, you know, than to bring two world title fights with two universally uh, known fighters as Lucas Matisse and, and Jorge Linares, obviously pound for pound, one of the best fighters in the world. Um, I want to introduce you now to some of the undercard fighters that are going to be fighting. And uh, I'll just uh, have them stand up and, and raise their hand when I call them out. Call them out. Uh, the first one is Javier Martinez uh, with a great record of 4-0 with three knockouts. He's a prospect. He's fighting Danny Flores, uh, and he's uh, trained by Joel Diaz. So, Javier, can you stand up? Great. That's Javier Martinez. <laughs> the other fighter that's going to be fighting also on the undercard uh, that we're excited about, a fighter we worked with in the past, and uh, he's a fighter that certainly can fight in the near future the winner of the main event, and that's the Quan Paldo with a record of 16 and one, uh, formerly known as the Quan Arnett. The Quan, stand up. Very exciting fighter. 
uh, he'll be taking on Osvaldo Gonzalez. Uh, the next fighter I want to introduce uh, is, uh, has been staying busy. He fought five times in 2017. Armenian welterweight prostate, Ferdinand Kerobian. Is he here? Oh, he's not here? Oh, I'm sorry. Okay, it was in my notes. Okay. Sorry about that. He'll be taking on Lucius Johnson. That's going to be a good fight. Uh, so you don't want to miss uh, that fight as well. Uh, also on the card, a rarely seen exciting battle between two undefeated prospects. Uh, Tenochtitlan T-Dog Nava, 7-0. Uh, he's a local favorite. He comes out of Westside Boxing. Uh, he's been getting a following here in the L.A. area. Uh, he's fought uh, primarily in some of our shows uh, with the L.A. Fight Club. And he's taking on another undefeated fighter in Francisco El Alacran Esparza. So, Tenochtitlan, are you here? Yeah. He's here, right there. And do we have Francisco Esparza here? He's also here. Both guys. Both guys are undefeated, and obviously, as you know, you know it's very tough when they're prospects uh, to see two undefeated fighters fight each other. Uh, but you know. Uh, I got to give it to our matchmaker, Robert Diaz, that was able to make this fight, and uh, it's going to be a very exciting fight that you'll be able to watch on Ring, on Ring TV Live. Uh, okay, um, now the uh, Esparza, oh, by the way, Esparza is trained by Fernando Vargas, the great Fernando Vargas that's right over here. So he's one of his fighters. And I, I, know, I know that Fernando's very high on, on this fight and uh, on his fighter, and one thing I know about Fernando, all his fighters come ready to fight, and they're, t they're all very tough, just like he was in his career. So thank you, Fernando. Thank you for being here and for, for being part of this great card. Uh, the other undercard fight uh, is a fighter that I'm very excited about because he's a very exciting fighter, uh, aggressive, big puncher, uh, Filipino fighter, Romero Duno, 15-1. And he's going to be fighting against Sacramento, California's uh, Yardley Armenta, who has a very good record. Is Yardley here? No? Okay, Yardley's not here. If you all know uh, Duno, uh, he had some very exciting fights in his last couple of fights, and uh, he's always one to watch as well. So you don't want to miss his, his fight. Uh, also, topping uh, Ring, TV, uh, Ring TV's live stream will be Argentinian super lightweight Marcelino Nino Lopez. Uh, coming off a great win, he knocked out Pablo Cesar Cano, a fighter that, you know, had never been stopped before, a fighter that's, you know, had world title uh, fights in, in, you know, uh, in, in his resume. And uh, he really, ex you know, he surprised everybody by stopping Cano. And uh, so he put up a, a very good performance, and he's fighting a uh, very experienced Colombian fighter, Brady's, Brady's Prescott. So, Nino, can you stand up, Nino? And Nino comes from the stable of uh, Mario Arano, who also comes, uh, he's our co-promoter with Lucas Matisse, and we're very excited about Nino. He's a fighter that certainly can challenge for a world title late, later this year. With that said, uh, that's our undercard fights. We're very excited about that. Um, so you don't want to miss the undercard. Make sure you come out early, because a lot of these kids will be for, you know, future world champions, and uh, you'll get to see them early on in their career. And, They'll put up a good show for you. Um, before I get into the TV fights, I want to acknowledge and have them come up and say a few words. Uh, my boss and a partner at Golden Boy Promotions, Bernard Hopkins. Bernard? I'm going to be short, I promise. It's a new year, new schedule, so I ain't going to bore nobody. But first, I'd like to say, not only are we going to win, but not only are we going to win, but we're going to win the Super Bowl. I just need to get that out there. <laughs> So I, I just want to, we, we about boxing, I understand, but, you know, it's been a long time the city been in the Super Bowl. Um, look, Eric said it best. I mean, this is, this is a good, under, great undercard. Good undercard can be a great one when a fight happens. And all the guys to my right and my left that has an opportunity to, to start the year off right and start the year off saying, I want y'all to look at me, all eyes on me, and have an opportunity to do that. But we know about Matisse, we know about... Um, you know, the main event, the co-main event. Um, it's going to be a good good fight, um, a fight that, you know, people can have their different opinion about. But this is a chance for 
both sides, left and right, to be able to stand out um, in January and go into the next couple of months into the year and set yourself apart as I'm the best. So like I said, you don't have to be in competition with uh, yourself, you'd be in competition with the boxing worlds and what they think about who the best in the division. And this is a chance. So to all the fighters and to all, all the people that's involved, um, let's just continue to do what we said uh, years ago. Uh, Doug Fisher, how you doing? We want to give you the best fights and continue to show the best fights on the networks and also to the, to the reporters, to the writers, and anybody else that's involved in boxing to know that we are um, in competition with ourselves to make boxing um, in a front light, like the Super Bowl, like basketball, any other sport. So I'm glad to be a part of it with Eric, Oscar, my, uh, my partner, and anybody else that's involved with Golden Boy. Thank you. Thank you, Bernard. So now that brings us to the co-feature or the co-main event. Uh, which is Jorge Linares, as you guys very well know, uh, WBC and WBA champion, uh, great record, 43-3, and three, uh, 27 knockouts, one of the top fighters in the world, pound for pound, and he's taking on Mercito Hesta with another great record, 31-1. and one. Now, when we first made this fight, <clears throat> a lot of you guys in the media said Mercito didn't really have a chance. And that's fair, that's your opinion. I know that this is a dangerous fight. Mercito has nothing to lose. He can derail Jorge Linares' plans here in the US. Jorge has been saying it time in and time out. Jorge wants to fight the best fighters in the world. We made it a great offer to Mikey Garcia, he turned it down. Uh, Lomachenko is being considered as a possible opponent. That's a fight that can possibly happen down the line, but he has to get past Mercito Hesta. Now, if there's one thing I learned early on in my boxing career, is that you never bet against Freddie Roach. <laughs> and I'm gonna have him come up here and you, you're gonna hear it for yourself. I mean, he trained Mercito like never before. <clears throat> and if there's one thing you know about Filipino fighters, they have that fighting spirit that you never question. You know, they're, they're, they're up there and they give it their all. And I was doing some research on Freddie Roach and I found that Freddie Roach is something like eight and zero when he faces ex-fighters he used to train, which is incredible. And, and, you know, and, and, you know, it's a little dangerous because Freddie knows Linares. He knows his tendencies. He was in camp with them. He trained them for a couple of years. And now he's training the guy that's going to fight him. So that's a big advantage for Mercito Hesta. So Freddie knows what he's talking about. He's one of the greatest trainers ever. And I'm always very excited when he's part of our, our shows and works with us because there's just you know, a wealth of knowledge with Freddie Roach. And uh, so I want to bring him up. He'll say a few words about his fighter, Freddie Roach, the great Freddie Roach. <laughs> It's been a really good training camp with Marcito. He's really worked hard for this fight. He's in with one of the best fighters in the world, and uh, I think he's right in that category also. Uh, we had great sparring going into fight, and um, a lot of hard work at the wild card, and um, we still just uh, tapering off now and getting ready for the fight. And um, I'd like to say good luck to our opponent, our challenger. And um, best of luck. Thank you very much. There you go. He doesn't say much, but you know he means it. <laughs> you know he means it. So Mercito's in a great position here. He can really win the lottery on Saturday night. Um, I'm happy that we were able to get this fight for Mercito. He deserves it. Uh, you know, he, uh, he, he's got the resume. He's got the record. And uh, he's going to give it his all. You know, this is, this is his Super Bowl. A week before the Super Bowl, he's fighting his Super Bowl. So I want to bring him up. Um, great record, 31-1. and one. Mercito, no mercy, Hesta. Um, 
just want to say thank you to the media that's here and um, HBO for making this and my matchmaker, uh, Robert, for making this great uh, uh, match. And, um, you know, like, like uh, what uh, Jorge wants to face, he wants to face the best, and I'm the same thing. I want to face the best. Uh, I think I believe as a fighter to be, to call yourself as the best, you need to face the best and beat the best. And, um, you know, uh, in this camp that I have, everything just went smooth. My team, my family, everyone just supported me. I'm over here. I don't have any problem. And with the help of Freddie Roach, Marvin Samudio, and Justin, man, everything just went well. My sparring is good. They believe in me. Coach Freddie Roach believe in me. And, um, you know, I, I am ready. This is my second shot. And, like... There's nothing to lose over here, and as a challenger, I'm always hungry. The, the challenger is the hungrier than a champion because he wants that belt. And this Saturday, I will show that I can be the next, the new world champion. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Merjisto. Merjisto. So, you guys all know Jorge Linares, obviously, he's been on a great run. You know, he fought a few times in the UK, had some big wins out there, became champion. He came out here defending his title at the Forum. This is his second consecutive fight at the Forum. He's trying to make a name for himself again here in the US. And these are the kind of fights he needs. He needs to be showcased on HBO, obviously, to become a, a star because that's all HBO does is make stars in boxing. And he's got to prove himself. You know, when he's fighting a guy like Mercito Hesta, it's not, it wasn't his first choice, but these are the most dangerous fights, the guys you overlook, the guys that you're supposed to beat. So this is a dangerous fight, but he is one of the top fighters in the world, pound for pound. And as all of you very well know, to be one of the top fighters pound for pound, you have, a, you have to have a very good trainer. And he certainly does have a very good trainer that I feel is a little underrated as a trainer, but he is a top trainer uh, in the world today. Uh, he comes from the exclusive Cuban school of boxing, and he's the trainer for Linares, and that's Ismael Salas. So I want to bring him up to say a few words. Ismael. <laughs> Roberto Diaz will translate for us. Good morning to anyone, to everyone. Sorry. Uh, I'd like to say just a short word. I really, the same research uh, Mr. Gomez did, I, the same research I came in conclusion is the only one thing. Yes, Mr. Freddy Roach have all A and O with fighters he used to train. But one thing for sure, can I take in count, he used to train Jorge, and Jorge lost with him. And they have a reason. And with all my respect, we, are, we go to the real fight. Uh, Jorge is the kind of fighter, is always fighting uh, underdog, always we go to the foreign uh, territory to fight, and always we go in the name of God, beating everyone. So I really uh, appreciate the opportunity to bring the great fight because uh, Mercy to Hesta, we cannot take away anything. It's a really great fight. Um, we will do our best. Thank you so much. Um, so, Jorge Linares is obviously uh, a beautiful fighter to watch. You know, it's funny. I get asked a lot, you know, because I'm associated with Oscar. I get asked a lot, hey, who do you see out there that kind of re resembles Oscar? Who do you see out there that kind of... And there's a reason they call him Nino de Oro. I mean, you know, just his fighting style, the jab, uh, boxing off his toes and the combinations. You know, he's a beautiful fighter to watch. 
He does everything so, pic, you know, textbook, textbook, picture perfect. Uh, but again, you know, he's lost before. And he's lost here in Los Angeles before against the lefty. Uh, so this is a dangerous fight for him. But every great champion has to prove himself every time out. And that's what Jorge Linares is here to do, prove himself. He wants to prove that he belongs in the ring with the greats. And he's challenging everybody. And our job as his promoter is to get him those opportunities and put him in the biggest fights we can. Uh, you know, some, some fighters might not want to fight, fight him. You know, and we're okay with that. Uh, but, you know, he's always up for a challenge. And uh, this Saturday won't be any different. So I want to bring him up. He's the WBA uh, lightweight world champion, Jorge Linares. Jorge? Hello to everyone. Let me start first. Uh, thank you to Golden Boy Promotion for this opportunity. Uh, Peter Nelson, HBO, uh, Eris Gomez. Uh, for all the, the people uh, support to me for this fight, thank you to Frey Roche, thank you to Mercedes Hesta for this big opportunity uh, this Saturday. Um, I'm ready, I'm here. I feel very excited for this, this fight. Uh, I've been the good preparation physical with Ismael Sala and with my team in Japan too. So I'm ready. I'm ready for this fight. Uh, me siento bastante contento, eh, apasionado, eh, feliz de esta nueva oportunidad. Sé que es un reto difícil. Eh, Mercedes Rojesta es un boxeador eh, fuerte, eh, con hambre, con ganas. Pero lo más importante es que yo estoy viviendo mi mejor momento y no quiero que nadie me lo quite porque saliendo bien, Van a venir cosas mejores. Se hablan de muchos nombres. No, no quiero pensar eso, no quiero hablar de eso. Para mí, el nombre más importante y lo más importante para mí es salir victorioso este sábado 27. Mina san, konnichiwa. Ano sa, ma, mo soro soro, si hay, mo dete kureo, mo doyobi, doyorda. まあ、本当に今回はすごい良かった not only does he have good looks, <laughs> but the guy can speak three, la four languages, four, a little bit of French. Yeah. Okay, that's great. Thank you, Jorge. Gracias. Okay, before I get to the main event, uh, it's my great pleasure uh, to introduce and just, you know, say hi to everybody. He's here, uh, the great Hall of Famer, Don Chargan. He's sitting over here. <laughs> who's, who's my teacher and uh, our, our co-promoter. We're partners with uh, Marcito Hesta. So thank you, Don, for being here. Um, okay, now the main event. Uh, this is going to be, when I tell you this is going to be an exciting fight, um, I, I can't really put it into words because, you know, many of you don't really know who Tiwa Kiram is. Uh, but I will say this. The last time an undefeated Thai fighter came out and fought a champion here in the States, he ended up, you know, having a draw, but he ended up coming back and beating uh, Chocolatito. Uh, so... That's how tough uh, Tiwa Kiram is. I mean, I've been watching tapes and, and analyzing tapes with Robert Diaz. We were looking at him, and uh, the first thing that we saw was he's very aggressive. He, he doesn't give an inch. He stands his ground, which is uh, obviously a great style for boxing. It's a great style. And Lucas, as you guys know, he's the same way. You know, he's a guy, he's a boxer puncher, but he's a guy that stands his ground, and he's going to come and try to knock you out. So that makes for a great fight. So I'm very excited about this fight. This is going to be a tremendous war, and, and I can guarantee that. 
Uh, I don't know if it's going to go the distance, but there's going to be a lot of action in this fight. Uh, so I want to bring up the promoter of Tiwaki Ram to say a few words, Terry Lausuawat. Thank you. Thank you, Golden Boy Promotion. Robert, thank you. WBA, you know. Tewa is number one, man. You know, 38 and 0. You know, he get this not by luck, you know. You know, he's going to do his best. It's not easy to, to be here to fight the world title in America. So, you know, he got the best shape right now. You know, he 25 years old. Lucas is 35, you know. He's taller, uh, like, like two inches taller. So, you know, we're not underdog. Yeah, let's see the result. Thank you. So Tiwa came out uh, a, w a week ago, Robert. He's been here for 10 days now? Two weeks. two weeks ago, two weeks ago, which tells you, you know, he's serious. You know, he's not just a fighter that's coming out for a payday. He really wants to win this fight. He's taking this fight serious. He came out two weeks ago, and when I first met him, you know, he came over last week to the office uh, to meet everybody, our staff, and the first thing that caught my eye was just how big he is. I mean, he's, you know, he's, he's probably bigger than Canelo, it looks like. He's tall. He's tall, and he's a big kid, and he's strong. So I know that Lucas is going to have his hands full in this fight, but again, that just shows you the dedication, you know, to come out two weeks prior. He's here to win. And uh, I know he's going to put up a good fight. He's a warrior. And uh, what better victory than to beat a recognized fighter like Lucas Matisse. That's a fan-friendly fighter that, you know, a lot of you guys in the media and a lot of fans around the world love Lucas Matisse's style. So if he beats him, in many ways, he's going to win the lottery. So... I'll bring him up to say a few words. He's got a translator here, Tiwa Kiram. ครับสวัสดีครับครับขอบคุณหน่วยงานทุกฝ่ายนะครับขอบคุณโกลเด้นบอยโปรโมชั่นนะครับที่ได้จัดผมชิงแชมป์โลกรุ่นวอเตอร
y a su equipo por compartir este, esta cartelera tan importante y ojalá que salga todo muy bien. A la AMB, Oliver, le hace llegar el saludo a, a Gilberto Jesús, por favor. Gracias por la oportunidad, de verdad, te lo digo de corazón. Muchas gracias. First, I want to thank HBO for this opportunity to feature Lucas fighting for the world title. I want to thank Linares and his team for considering us to partake in this event. And I also want to thank WBA for this opportunity. Please uh, send my best to the president, Gilberto Mendoza, and we're very honored for this opportunity. Llegó la hora. Llegó la hora de, y el tiempo de Lucas Matisse. Hoy Matisse es el abanderado, el estandarte de Golden Boy Promotion y de Arano Box en Argentina y en Sudamérica. Seguramente que Argentina se irá a parar el día sábado para esta pelea. The time has come. It is now here. And come Saturday night, that face of Argentina in Golden Boy will have Argentina stand still. I am very, very confident that everybody's just waiting for this moment, Saturday night. Me siento tremendamente orgulloso de que Lucas y Nino López compartan una cartelera y a su vez que Matisse sea el main event compartiendo con Jorge Linares, el cual vuelvo a agradecer su hombría de bien. Este, y eh, seguramente que esta será una llave tremendamente importante tanto como para nuestro equipo, como nuestra organización, como para el boxeo argentino todo. And I'm very honored to have both Lucas and Nino López uh, participating in a card and also to have, like I said before, Linares, uh, this opportunity to participate in these world title fights. And this is going to be key. This is going to be key to bring on bigger and better fights, but it starts this Saturday. El mundo aplaudirá a Lucas Matisse campeón. Muchísimas gracias. Muy amable. And the world will celebrate Lucas Matisse's victory on Saturday. Thank you. As you guys know, Lucas is coming off a very impressive win. It was his comeback fight. He was off uh, because uh, he suffered uh, a, a eye problems. He had an eye injury and he suffered that and he had a, a comeback fight back in May. He fought underneath Canelo Chavez, very good victory. Very tough fighter that doesn't get stopped. First time he stopped him, uh, Emmanuel Taylor. Uh, but this is gonna be the second fight working with Joel Diaz and I could see the difference already. I was in camp the other day with Lucas, and, and you can see the different, the movement. Um, he has better defense. He's hitting harder than before, if that's even possible. I mean, Lucas is a big puncher to begin with. But Joel Diaz has done a great job with him and uh, got him ready for this fight, for a tough fight. So I want to bring him up to say a few words. Joel Diaz. Good morning, everybody. Uh, thanks to all the media that's here today. Thanks to uh, Golden Boy, uh, HBO, uh, and everybody that made this possible. Um, first of all, I want to give Golden Boy the, uh, I want to thank Golden Boy for giving me the opportunity to work with Lucas Matisse, uh, a fighter at that caliber. To me, it's an honor working with him because he's the type of fighter that I like to work with from the beginning. He's aggressive. You know, he has a heavy, a heavy punch. And giving me the opportunity now, I'm committed. I'm committed to, you know, take advantage of this opportunity uh, for his world title, you know, and I want to be part of it. Saturday night, I uh, want to do everything possible to see Lucas Matisse take advantage of this opportunity. Thank you, and you guys will see a great fight. Uh, new Lucas Matisse, I want to... Thank everybody in the card, Mercito Gestas, uh, Linares, and obviously, Teo Akiram for stepping up, for stepping up for the challenge. Thank you so much. Now, they call him the machine, La Máquina. You don't get that nickname <laughs> just by chance. Uh, he is one of the most exciting fighters in all of boxing. You know, he's a big puncher. You know you're always going to get 
fireworks when he fights in the ring. Um, he's got a fighter that he's going to fight. The perfect style for him. A guy that's going to be right in front of him, who's dangerous, but it's the style that he likes to fight. And it's what makes him give good fights. Um, I think, uh, who was it, Dougie? Who first named him the machine? Was it you, Dougie, or? It might have been Dougie. It might have been Doug Fisher that first named him out here the machine. But it's, it's stuck with him, and, and fans all over the world know him as the machine, La Machina. I want to bring him up, say a few words. Uh, Lucas, La Machina Matisse. Lucas. Hola, bueno, buenas tardes a todos. Muchas gracias por, por venir. Y nada, la verdad que bueno, muy contento, muy contento de estar peleando por título mundial, eh, de compartir esta cartelera con, con Donito, allá con Gesta, con todos. La verdad que, que bueno, muy contento eh, por pelear con Kirán. Va a ser una gran pelea, nos preparamos muy bien en Argentina, terminamos una buena preparación acá en Indio junto a Joel, a mi equipo, a mi cuñado Mario, a Fede a Cumbia, a Arano, a Nino López, al amigo Javier. La verdad que, que nada, muy contento. Gracias a la gente de Golden Boy, gracias a Arano Box, gracias para toda Argentina que, que va a estar apoyando, para mi amigo Daniel acá que vino, para Luca que vinieron de Argentina. Se hicieron un viaje muy grande. Así que, bueno, muchas gracias. Nos vemos el sábado y a disfrutar una gran pelea que vamos a hacer con Quirán. Gracias. Let's see if I can remember all that. Uh, thank you, everybody. I want to thank you all for being here. Um, I'm very excited for the opportunity. I'm very excited to be fighting for the world title. I want to thank my team. I want to thank uh, the other participants on the card. Uh, Mario Arano, Golden Boy, all my, my team that, that we worked hard in camp. We started camp in Argentina, worked a lot of the strength, and we closed it up here in Indio, California with Joel. And, and we're ready, and we're ready to take that title back. I want to thank my friends that came out from Argentina, and I want to thank Kiram. And come Saturday night, don't miss it. We're ready to take that title back. Thank you. Bueno, muchas gracias. Gracias a todos. Un saludo para toda la gente argentina que me está siguiendo. Y para todos. Nos vemos el sábado. Gracias. And he wants to thank everybody that supports him, all his fans and friends, and everybody in Argentina. We'll see you Saturday night. Thank you. Gracias, Lucas. Gracias. So with that, that's the end of the press conference. Uh, just a couple of quick reminders. Uh, tickets still available. You can get them at Ticketmaster. Um, yeah, we're gonna do. It. We'll do it with the with the polls right now. Uh, tickets still available uh, at Ticketmaster. You can get them at the box office at the forum, or if you can't be there in person for whatever reason, make sure you watch it on HBO Boxing After Dark, 10:30 uh, Pacific, uh, Eastern and Pacific. Uh, locally 7.30, okay. So uh, I'll see you guys this Saturday. Hope to see everyone there. Thank you. We're gonna, we're gonna pose the fighters now for, for pictures.
Right. A la, to the right. A la izquierda. 